Hey, it's uh, Benjamin Ray here with another Sustainability Live. I'm here with Tony Scolian. How are you doing today? Fantastic, Benjamin. Yourself? Doing excellent today. It's great to see you again. Uh, we've talked here for over the past couple months or so, month or so about doing something like this, and I'm really happy to have you here. You know, where are you exactly right now? You know, that's a cool thing about the internet. I don't know. So where are you now? Currently, I'm in sunny Dubai. So I, 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 I'm, I'm enjoying the sun every day. Colorado. <laughs> Good. So tell us a little bit about how you got to Dubai. Your accent's different. And so kind of what's your path and what's what how have you spent the last kind of 25 years or before professionally? And how'd you get to Dubai doing what you're doing? So I've been in Dubai approximately five years. Um, I came from a very cold Northern Ireland and um, I spent my last 25 years as a coach. Part of that time was part-time. And then when the credit crunch happened in 2008, 2009 sort of time, I went full-time, followed my passion. It was something that um, I was always magnetized towards um, from I was... 17 years old and now 43 and um, it's people always came to me for fitness advice nutrition advice um, i have a large history in uh, martial arts mm -hmm. and uh, that's what sort of kept me disciplined on my path over these last 25 years you know it's it's interesting how we get kind of where we are and when we talk about sustainability that's what i really admire about you is 25 years you've really been in this space and something i know that you focus on that we've talked about is sustainable productivity and really how you get out of your own way can you talk a little bit about that because that's a very interesting thing for people to kind of learn how you did that well, the biggest lesson I learned in being more productive was accepting that it was my responsibility for everything happened to me in my life. So that means either how I reacted to a situation or what I personally did to contribute to that situation. And once I made that change in my life, I looked more at a solution basis instead of blaming other people and get and getting stuck in a negative mindset. So where's that related to productivity? So that's when you're trying to do whatever it is during the day for your work, if you're trying to do creative tasks, data oriented tasks or whatever it might be, um, at some point you're going to reach a state of overwhelm and you go into a negative spiral. And whenever that happens, you typically start um, blaming other people or whatever it might be. But by taking responsibility for, for what you're doing, then you should be able to look at, can I delegate these tasks if it's, cost, if it's causing me too much overwhelm to somebody else? Or can I split it into time frames? and come back to that task at a later point or do i just delete the task completely is it something that's working towards your your higher self as in your business as in your you know your your health or your relationships so if you're working on tasks daily that take away from your higher goals, you maybe need to delete them. And if it's something that's causing you a lot of stress, you maybe need to delegate them. So prioritizing what's really important, getting rid of the fluff, and uh, be being accountable to yourself or somebody else in such a way that uh, you can do weekly or daily evaluations to improve. So when you're talking about you know, not blaming others. I mean, is that really about how you are not letting your the circumstances dictate really what you do? You realize it's up to me and I need to be responsible for my life and those around me whom I love. And it's nothing to do with anything else. Is that really how you mean about that? Accepting responsibility? Exactly. And many of us have got through the stressful times of COVID. And, you know, it's natural to start blaming COVID for the situations that have happened with our jobs and maybe with some of us with our health. And uh, the scenario should be is, how can I fix this? Always look for a positive way out instead of dwelling on the negative aspect. You know, there's things that are in your control and that's how you deal with the situation. And that that's out of your control, there's no point wasting energy especially negative energy on that um, scenario focus on the positive 
Now, how do you how do you do that if you're in the negative spiral because the circumstances of the world are you know we don't know what the it's not a clear path how how does one stop the mind from spiraling like that well a very simple trick that i use is whenever the brain fog comes on and um, the overwhelm starts to happen and the anxiety starts to happen if i'm still trying to find a solution and i can't break through that cloud um, i brain dump everything in my head because the problem is in here so i write down absolutely everything every thought every negative every positive in my head i brain dump onto a piece of paper then once i finish that i don't try to solve anything right now because the problem is i'm trying to solve it in here and even though i'm taking it from here and putting it on paper i need a break so i take it from here to paper and then I might simply go for a walk or walk up and down the stairs or it could be as simple as do some push-ups or some squats to start channeling that negative energy to increase blood flow to get yourself back down to be grounded again and then after I finish that if I still feel there's a bit of overwhelm or anxiety I will simply do a 10 minute meditation of something easy like Wim Hof breathing and that, that's helping bring the physical and the mental and um, combining them and grounding you again. And then after that, you can go back to your list that you have created and you can look at anything on the list that you can actually take control of and move towards something positive. Do so. Anything that you can't, forget about it for this moment in time. Because now, how do you here. forget about it? Do you... Do you actually like put a line through it or how do you get the negative things out of your mind or that you said delete earlier? How do you delete those things that are still on your list? Well, the, some of those things might typically be they're irrelevant. They're, there's nothing you can do to change them. There's, you know, all you can do is maybe work towards work towards taking action towards changing it instead of trying to fix that initial scenario. So sometimes action is better than trying to fix the scenario that's completely out of your control. And if it's already in the past, you can't change it. You can only change what's happening in the now to create the future. So when you talk about getting out of your own way, that's kind of a way to do it is your own way may be stuck in these patterns and getting out of that or past that is, is something else you focus on. Absolutely. And the biggest problem for me previously was uh, being stuck and not being self-aware that let's say you're working at a computer screen and you're trying to, you know, write an email or some, something like that and you get stuck. Um, you, you can stare at the screen for 20 minutes, 30 minutes trying to get something done instead of learning to maybe write part of the email then go and do a separate task and come back to it later if you're so badly stuck or maybe getting some help to to write the email for example or create a website or you know whatever it might be you know one, one thing that that i haven't told you a couple times a couple weeks ago when we talked i had a lot, a lot of things spinning around in my head and i put them all down on the paper and something you said to me really hit me but it wasn't until a week later when you said you know then you can connect the dots and so what I ended up doing is I, I had saved all those thoughts on a piece of paper and then I went back to them. And then I was able to see some of the elements come out kind of the paper and they connected. And then I was able to really see that they weren't just independent thoughts, that they were part of a, a larger thing that I was working on. And it was tremendously helpful to- The bigger to picture. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was good. So I appreciate that, thank you. No problem. Yeah. The, the next question I have is about um, nutrition, about sustainable nutrition. You know, a lot of people get on some diets or fads, and especially with the year coming up, it's not sustainable. So how have you been able to sustain nutrition and live kind of healthily and, and not really restrict kind of what you're eating? Tell me about that. Well, the, the bottom line is your digestion. Okay, so if, if your digestion is causing you to be sluggish, and to have very little energy after eating certain certain foods then either the food is probably too high in fat or something like that but you typically need to address your digestion and a very simple fix for most people is just to 
increase water because your body's made of seventy percent water, mm. and if you're if you're dehydrated and you're eating sort of large, if you're eating junk food, for example, and it's a large meal, you know you need the water to be in your system to be able to help you digest that easier on a very basic level. Obviously, then probiotics and the digestive enzymes will help on top of that if you if you really need them. But the way I look at food is food is typically just energy and I still eat junk food, I still eat sweet food and everything else. But what I try to do personally is most of uh, my junk food that I'll eat will be later at night when I can afford to um, have that sluggish feeling afterwards. If anything, it will help me sleep. Mm-hmm. As, long as, as long as it's not maybe directly before bed, which then it can upset your sleeping pattern. But what I mean is I could eat healthier meals. Let's say I'm eating three meals a day. So I can have two strict meals and one fun meal. And that fun meal could be six o'clock, seven o'clock, something like that in the evening, which if I'm not going to bed till 12, allows plenty of time for that to digest. And then as, as I'm tapering down for the day, it might actually help towards my sleeping pattern. Um, but there's multiple other factors need to be addressed, obviously, to personalize this for somebody. Um, but me having um, an autoimmune disorder, which actually causes extreme fatigue, mm. and anybody, anybody that knows me will know I'm always full of energy. And that's just by managing my nutrition. I still eat junk food, as I say, but also my vitamins and minerals. So if I'm not getting those vitamins and minerals from my food, then I do have to supplement to make sure I'm getting them. And even if I was eating the strictest of diets with the way food is farmed nowadays, I still would not get a lot of the vitamins and minerals that I essentially need. So supplements are very necessary, especially for me, that um, I I need extra minerals and nutrients to help me support my autoimmune disorder. And and how long have you had that? And how did you learn that you weren't just tired? You know, what's some history there? Well, actually, it happened when my mother was diagnosed and they thought she had uh, multiple other conditions. And I, I, for years, I thought I, I was borderline diabetic because mm-hmm. I was having blackouts through training. Um, I was feeling extremely fatigued after uh, long training sessions. But my martial arts coach uh, used to call us mental midgets <laughs> when we wanted to give up. And I always thought that for some reason I was just being weak. And it was actually a a blessing when I found out there was something physiological wrong with me that uh, was causing this effect. And um, since then, in the the beginning, I was getting like arthritic pains. Mm. Um, I was I was getting the deep fatigue. I was getting like brain fog, all these um, elements. And I I had to get blood to get because it's iron overload disease. Mm. I had to get rid of the iron in my body. It was essentially um, causing slowdown it was sluggish within my bloodstream and um, luckily now i know how to manage my nutrition i still go in cycles Um, a large factor of that for me is digestion Mm. and um, oxidative stress which happens more so for me with my condition will eat away at gut flora and your gut bacteria and um, it's for me being self-aware is essential and that's happened over a, a lot of years with meditation and basically analyzing when do I get the fatigue is it after eating certain foods um, is it certain times of the day is it after like a certain amount of activity throughout the week mm. um, and what I've established as a baseline is it's just whenever my gut flora seems to be getting very low and then obviously there's I, I would have toiletry problems that are start to appear more whenever that happens I would have more like negative energy sessions during mm-hmm. the day where I would get uh, like energy uh, crashes rapidly so so whenever that starts happening I need to start in a process of uh, basically building up my gut flora again and for years I couldn't even eat bread after that without it costing causing me so much problems and now luckily since i know how to manage it i can eat whatever i want as long as uh, whenever uh, i i'm in a, in a strong cycle but whenever i start to feel that i'm having problems with bread and things like that again that there are telltale signs that i need to start rebuilding my gut flora so you so you really need to monitor or or you choose to monitor what your intake is so that you know your limits so you say i can i can't have this and within those limits, you can do whatever you want, provided you know what they are. 
Absolutely. So it's just being self-aware of sort of the the digestive problems and the mental problems. So if I start getting energy slumps, then that's obviously going to kill productivity. And because I do daily and weekly reviews on productivity, both with uh, exercise improvement and with work, with them, I work long hours de developing content and bits and pieces from my business. And uh, when you see on a weekly basis that there's been a big slump, you have to address that. Well, what's causing that? Is is it you know, is it my nutrition? Is it, you know, am I sleeping enough? Am I training too hard? Or basically, am I doing the wrong things? You know, whatever it might be. So that weekly evaluation really helps. And it's the same structure I follow from my clients, weekly accountability. Without it, you can, you can only improve what you can measure. So do you write down everything that you eat? Uh, I go through phases of I do when I'm really strict. Yes, but you know, when you've been practicing something for a lot of years, you get into habits that, you know, you can you can go through a phase of you don't need to measure everything you eat. But if, you, if I start seeing my body fat increase, then I know straight away I need to go back to measuring things again. But if my body fat's staying at the level I want it to be at, then I don't. It's as simple as that. Well, let's talk about measurements and exercise now. So I want to know about how do you sustain a an exercise program, um, you know, before COVID, through COVID, after that, you know, just how have you maintained that for so long, that very disciplined, strict uh, exercise regime? And what recommendations would you have for someone who is not kind of a professional level like you are to sustain it? So the bottom line is do an exercise program that is personalized for you. Um, I, I've had a lot of people start um, on my client programs that they've been on previous programs that have been like a one size fits all. And uh, as I say, I'm 43 and I, I occasionally will have knee injuries, ankle injuries, you know, where the joints swell up when I'm doing lots of running or jumping or whatever it might be. And it's important to know that the exercise routine you're following when you're having those slight aggravations it, that it doesn't add to your problem. So there should be specialized mobility and flexibility as part of that programming. And the exercises you're doing should be something that you're doing without causing damage to your body. And you can see weekly improvements in strength, endurance, and uh, cardiovascular, if you're obviously if you're doing running or those sort of um, activities. So what about stress management? You know, I, know, I, I think there are a lot of issues we're seeing about emotional health throughout this year. And, you know, I've heard and, you know, we know that if you exercise, it helps to manage stress. But how do you relate the two between, you know, stress and exercise or, or mitigating stress or managing stress? How do you see exercise fitting into that? So exercise can actually cause more stress because exercise causes more stress in the body. Um, that's why your nutrition has to be in order and your sleep to sort of manage that so as the three things are combined. Um, but as regards me managing stress, exercise for me is a, a, an amazing tool. And the reason for that is I always set myself goals. And whenever you have a sense of achievement in your exercise, it helps you manage stress better in your business life and your relationships because you're really learning to dig deep and there's, you know, there, whenever you have to try and reach that next level uh, through your exercise, you really have to dig deep, push hard, get to the next level. And, you know, you should congratulate yourself whenever you reach a next level. And um, then you should also apply this into your life. And martial arts is great for discipline. And currently at the minute, um, to, to, to help motivate others, I took up a five kilometers per day challenge until the start of 2021 on top of all my other exercise that I do. And I'm only on day, I think, uh, 12 today. And it's only five kilometers daily, which I can do a lot more. But it is really helping me stay disciplined with my business activities for moving into 2021. Um, so the bottom line is stress can be increased with exercise. So beware 
of doing too much cardio, that's a key contributor. So too right. much too much cardio, you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely, because there's a lot of oxidative stress in the body from um, extra cardio, which will, as I talked about earlier with my uh, autoimmune disorder, oxidative stress, too much of in the body, will cause joint pain and it will decrease your gut flora, which means then your digestion, you're not able to, even if you're eating the right food, you're not able to absorb it properly and make the most of it. Wow. I mean, so it is really all tied together and sustainability is finding the right balance and mm -hmm. not going too hard, not going too less. Monitor your body as much as you can when you need to. Absolutely. And that's why weekly you should evaluate um, your productivity within your training, your productivity within your business and other areas of your life. A, a key contributor to me to you start, once I found out I had the autoimmune disorder and it sort of gave me explanation, something I didn't like about myself when, when I was going through those early stages was whenever I got grumpy and negative and maybe your, your loved ones, you probably were more grumpy with them than you should have been. And then you, they're the people that love you and it's a case of they're your most supportive people, they're the people you should be least <laughs> grumpy with. And so whenever I started looking at my nutrition and the reasons why this was happening, I was just exhausted. My um, my uh, adrenal glands were completely burnt out because mm -hmm. my strong mindset was pushing me past the physical ability and uh, causing more problems. So it's, wow. it's important to be aware. Wow, interesting. Well, as this year is ending up, you know what what recommendations would you have to get through the winter or not, not really get through, but, you know, to be strong throughout this winter of COVID and, and at least cold here in the United States where I am, but, mm. you know, cold in many respects for how we are dealing within the world until the spring comes and summertime, what recommendations do you have for people to manage all of these elements from productivity to nutrition, to exercise, diet? So the first thing about productivity is planning time planning so obviously as i said earlier either you know take it on yourself prioritize delegate it to a, another member of your team if it's something that you could be working on higher higher level activities um if it's something that is not working towards your higher goal either leave it to later until it can be utilized or delete it completely um that's on the time planning um, on the time planning also for the week, one thing I've been very guilty of in the past is I've made it all about work and all about exercise and we all need relationships, relationships with our partners, with our families, with our friends and it's important to get those relationships plugged into your weekly diary so that you have a break away from the stress of work, the stress of exercise and you can learn to chill. Um, as regards exercise, if your schedule is super busy, you can still work out two or three times a week at 10 minutes a time. Hmm. And set yourself some sort of goal to achieve weekly that's realistic. And don't be too hard on yourself. Do something that's realistic because I guarantee you when you reach those small initial realistic goals and you start to feel better about yourself, you will find the time to get to the next level. And when you do that, you will find that many other areas of your life will start improving because that's your self-confidence, your self-worth, your self-value that you're improving on. And one big mistake that entrepreneurs make, uh, especially people that I've, I've met over the last few years, is that they focus so hard on business, they focus so hard on money that they forget to care about themselves. And the first thing they delete from their life is self-care. It's, it's like trying to drive a car and forgetting to put petrol and oil in it. It's going to stop and take care of it. It's going to stop and it's not going to go any further. So you have to take care of yourself first and then everything else will start to build. So you build, so you actually build in that time. So in your, your productivity calendar, let's say you're looking ahead, you would actually build in self time, uh, relationship Absolutely. time, chill time, and then work the rest of business around that. So it isn't like I'm going to work really hard so then I can 
you know, have time or, or money for my family because that rarely happens. So you're saying build it in first mm -hmm. and build your, your work time around that to be satisfied and, and not stressed. A hundred percent. And I've been very, very guilty in the past of being a workaholic and just focusing on work and training. I've been very guilty of that. And it's, it's cost me relationships. And, um, you know, I, I felt guilty about not speaking to my parents enough or speaking to friends enough. And I actually feel happier whenever I have got time to, and it doesn't have to be time that's going to take you away from your weekly goals of business and everything else. It just needs to be enough that you're opening up with other people because we all need love. Let's face it, love from friendships, love from family, love from relationships. And if, if you're not getting that love, your self-love starts to diminish as well, which means then you become purely focused on, let's say, business and you're not focusing on your health. And, you know, you can get to the point in your health where it's not reversible. And, you know, unfortunately, I know plenty of people that mm -hmm. this has happened to. So start with within. When you fix your inside world, your outside world will improve. Well, it's a, it's a good way to think about it. I think people think about it the opposite of that way. So counterintuitive, but I can I, I know that it does work and I appreciate that. Yeah. Let, let's say let's go out a year. Um, what are some things that you will have accomplished, will have accomplished in the next year if we're to talk uh, 12 months from now? I will be impacting at least a thousand people within 2021 with my knowledge, 25 years of knowledge. It's actually longer than that if you take into account my childhood experience in martial arts as well. Um, but it's it's not so much about the physical aspects, it's about the psychological and the mental aspects of valuing yourself and um, the self-love and, you know, manage yourself properly and then your business, your family life, your relationships will all work better. And, uh, you know, that's the message I want to spread. Obviously, um, my main focus uh, on my courses is weight loss, but so much of that begins in the head. And if, if you don't fix the habits and the, the way you look at things, then the weight loss is never going to happen and it's not going to be sustainable. It's all about sustainable habits. That's why I say, like, you can eat junk food, you can eat your sweets, you can drink alcohol if you wish, but there are guidelines to stick to um, for you to be able to do that on a sustainable basis and keep making progress with your health and fitness. Well, that's great. I, I have one question going back to the water. How much water should someone take? Because I think that's a, a really big part of all of this. And, and I know that I don't get enough water and many don't. How do you guide? What, what do you recommend for that? So there, there's variables that come into play, but a basic principle I use is for every 25 kilograms of body weight, drink one liter of water minimum. And so I'll have, of, I'll have to do a translation for that in terms of kilograms, in terms so of liters. 25 kilos would be 2.2. So if you imagine that's a fifth is five. So I think that's about 55 pounds. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's good to know. I think we could all use a little bit more water, obviously. So obviously one thing that will happen if your water intake is currently quite low and you're going to jump to that guideline, your bladder needs time to adapt. Oh. <laughs> so you might need to carry a bite. <laughs> if, you're, if you're traveling in the car, just, just be careful on your pee stops. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. That's a good recommendation. I appreciate that. Okay. And, and I really appreciate the time uh, here with me today. That's some really insightful knowledge, and I appreciate uh, everything that you said today. Thank you very much. So do you have any questions? Um, no, I don't, I don't have any, any questions today. You know, I did want to say, though, to people watching this, that uh, you and I are going to be on a longer call here at the end of the month. We'll have more people on. Mm -hmm. And we'll 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 you know tell people about it earlier, but we will really will talk about setting those goals for 2021 and how to achieve those. And I'm looking forward to that uh, some Absolutely. somewhere here in the next three weeks. So um, thank you, and and I'll be looking to uh, see you soon. And Lovely. have a great day. Or or actually, it's nighttime for you now. So uh, yes, it is. Enjoy your night in Dubai, and and we'll talk to you soon. 
Thanks a lot, Ben. Benjamin. Talk All to right. you soon, buddy. Um, Thank you, oh, buddy. Yeah. How, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, your website. I mean, what's the best way? Direct message you, text. So, what do you prefer? Yes, the best way if you have any questions about your health and fitness is contact me on my LinkedIn page, Tony Scullion Official, and um, just send me a, a, a direct message there. Tell me what uh, you want help with and we can potentially jump on a 10 minute call to see if I can help you first. And if I can, then we can work out some sort of strategy for helping you over the next 90 days or so. Perfect. All right. Thank okay. you. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye.